Uh, hi, everyone. I, uh, uh, how is the volume? Is okay? Yeah. Um, welcome to the LibreCon conference. Um, and welcome to our presentation about uh, uh, integration of large language models into the LibreOffice online, in our case. Following Sarah's presentation, we will show you some different kind of integration. Um, so, my name is Irina, uh, and this is the team that worked on, uh, uh, on the proof of concept that we are going to show you today. Uh, Andre, who is uh, right here next to me, and who will be presenting most of the technical part, and uh, Stefan, who is somewhere in, somewhere in the back, uh, and he helped us a lot with the front-end integration into LibreOffice Online. Uh, so this is the team and uh, uh, maybe some of you are wondering how and what do we have to do with uh, LibreOffice. Um, so what do we, how we are using LibreOffice and actually we are using Collabora Online since uh, three years ago. Uh, we have it integrated into our online office um, product into the WebDE and JMX portals. And um, um, this is just a print screen of uh, our uh, online office tool inside uh, uh, WebDE. Um, very short, this is the architecture that we have it installed in, in Mail and Media. We have our own uh, Kubernetes clusters, our own data centers where, where we have it uh, installed. Um, and uh, if you are curious about more details on the technical part of our integration, uh, you can follow uh, my colleagues, Edward, the presentation from Almeria, it's on YouTube. Uh, there is a link here, if the slides will be shared, you'll find the link here and you can find all the details of our integration. I think we were the first uh, to integrate uh, LibreOffice Online into a Kubernetes cluster. So it would be interesting for anyone who, is, uh, who wants to know more details about this. But our presentation today is actually focused on integration of large language models and for different use cases uh, in LibreOffice Online. Uh, so let's imagine that maybe you have a contract or maybe you have something like a legal document that you want to go through or you receive and uh, you, you don't really have the knowledge of uh, legal terms, or maybe you have uh, an instructions manual that you want to quickly find something inside, or you, you want to, um, to unblock yourself very quickly in a, in a certain situation, or maybe you have a technical documentation, like a very big uh, 500 pages uh, um, documentation of a new language that you have to learn because you need to do a proof of concept or you need to do an application very quickly. Um, so maybe in any of these cases, maybe you can just open a document uh, inside LibreOffice or inside the Collabora Online and you can just ask all kinds of questions and ask the the uh, language model that you have integrated to, to help you with this. So this is what we try to do and now uh, Andre will lead on with describing all the technical details of our proof of concept and also show you the demo. Okay, thank you Irina. Um, with the latest advancement in the machine learning areas, uh, advancement also my uh, previous speaker presented, we can actually do something related to the use cases that Irina mentioned. And uh, by latest advancement, I mean large language models. As you already saw on some presentation, large language models are language models on steroids. They are very, very big. They have billions of parameters. A parameter is something that the model needs to learn. For example, a weight or some fine tuning. Uh, for example, GPT 3.5, one of the models that uh, OpenAI has 175 billion parameters. Uh, some open source models like Bloom uh, come in different flavors, 175, 7, and 1 billion parameters. Lamadu comes in 7 billion, 30 billion, and 7 billion parameters, Falcon and MPT. 
for this demo that you show today, we play with all these models and we picked the best one for our use case. And it was actually uh, LAMA 2, 30 billion parameters, the model that performed the best for our use case. An interesting stuff about large language models is that they are very, very generic. They do only one thing. They receive an input and give you back an output. Very generic. So, however, how can we do different use cases with so generic large language models? And we do that using prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is a technique to instruct your large language model what we want to expect from it, what it needs to do. For example, we have a prompt engineering to do summarization. Instead of just sending the document to the model, we instruct the model, hey model, write a summary of this next text and give me the summary. This is a prompt engineering for chatbot. Again, I say the instruction, hey model, this is a piece of context. Use only this piece of context and answer to my question. Do not invent anything. This is the question, give me the answer. And how does the model know to answer this? Well, it is a very interesting stuff that when you grow in size to the models, you actually have some emerging, emerging capabilities. The one that also the co speaker, the previous speaker explained. For example, when you start to grow with the model, you get question answer capabilities, summarizing capabilities. And what is interesting about these capabilities is that they do not rely on the knowledge base of the model. It, they are just capabilities. Uh, and this is something very interesting, and this is why I love this use case of uh, ask a chatbot uh, or ask your document. Because on this use case, you do not rely on the knowledge base of the models. No matter how good is your model, even if it's GPT-4 with trillions of parameters, it is limited uh, and hallucinate. And you don't want to rely on the knowledge base of the model. You want to inject in the, no in the model your knowledge base and rely on the capabilities of the model to understand your knowledge base. And of course, again, this uh, will not be possible without a very big community. Um, you don't imagine how big is the Hugging Face community until you go to the platform. You have hundreds of uh, thousands of open source models, not only language models. You have a lot of libraries, very generic, very easy to use. Just switch the model and you have the code up and running. Of course, OpenAI and closed source models have sometimes some advantages. One of the advantages of closed source models is the accuracy. Uh, GPT-4 or uh, GPT-3.5 is very accurate uh, it, for a simple reason. It's very big and it costs money, um, but it's useful for some of the use cases, also how uh, we saw previously. Uh, however, we have also some open source models that are very close to OpenAI in terms of capabilities, like Llama 2, 7 billion parameter, Falcon uh, 180 billion, and MP3, 30 billion. All of these three models are very close to uh, OpenAI uh, models. Uh, none of them is as good as GPT-4, of course, but uh, some of them are even better than GPT-3.5, the free version, the free version of ChatGPT. Now, of course, open source model has a huge advantage, which was a must in our company, the privacy. Open source model running a Docker image on your infrastructure in isolation. You just don't share anything with outside. You deploy your model in your Kubernetes clusters, scale it up, send the document to the model, and that's it. Um, when your privacy is very important, uh, open source model rules in this case. Okay. This is our integration with uh, uh, Chatbot, and I will show you a demo. For now, this integration is actually So this integration is on QA. It's accessible only via VPN, so I cannot show you something live. What is here is a legal document. And you saw this new button here, chat with document. And when you open this button, the entire text of the document is sent to an open source model deployed in our infrastructure. You get a summary, and then you can ask questions about your document. Uh, for example, here, I'm asking, because this is a legal document, what parties are involved in this legal document? Of course, it's responding very well, everything is working fine. Then I ask a few more questions, like, for example, uh, for what country is the document? Is for Romania, is an NDA, uh, especially for Romanian uh, legislation. 
um, what is the duration of the contract I asked here or the agreement and of course he's extracting properly from, uh, from the document. What you see here is actually uh, sending all these questions and the document to a Docker image uh, that is running with uh, Llama 2, uh, 30 billion parameter version. Yeah? It's not the biggest Llama, it's not the uh, smallest one Llama, but we did some tests. Uh, we did some benchmarks, we did some, also some evaluation on the quality, and Llama 2, uh, 30 billion was the right uh, option for, for our use case. Now we have another document, we tried three, three documents. First was the legal document, this is a story, it's uh, the last question from Asifov, a very nice story. Um, again, you get the summary of the story, uh, then you can ask a few questions about it. Our main use case here is not code. This model um, is not supposed to write code, right? So if you have, for example, some source code here and you have the model, um, it will not be um, answering properly. This is for legal document, for um, let's say text document, for chatting in general. Okay, this was the last question from Asimov. You'll see a little bit later uh, how we do that. We'll, I'll show you a little bit the architecture, uh, and there are some tricks in order to do the summary and question answering to work as good with an open source small model. So imagine that this has 13 billion parameters. Uh, OpenAI GPT 3.5 has 175 billion parameters. Uh, GPT 4, we don't know exactly because it's uh, closed also from the architecture point of view. But this model is quite good for our, for our use case. Okay, and the last document that we tested, again, is a, a technical document about Go language, and I asked just a few questions uh, related to the Go language, not the, the, to write code. We open the icon to uh, ask the, the model. Again, the text is sent to the model. We get a summary of the document, and then we can ask a few, few questions about uh, the Go language. What are the advantages? the disadvantages, and when the model, okay? And the nice thing about this is, again, is working with the knowledge base of a user, it's not the knowledge base of the model. So when I'm asking now, here, when was the Go released? Uh, the answer is not from the knowledge of the model, it's from this document. If I put in those, this document something else, it will answer based on the document. And this is very, very useful, and you'll see a little bit later into the slide, why. Okay. Okay, need to share again. Okay. okay, so you saw the demo. Now the architecture. First we have the generic part. The generic part are some Docker images um, with hug and face code that run the models. And this is very, very generic. It's use case agnostic. Uh, it can be used to actually implement any use case that you saw previously that large language models are capable of, like translate, uh, uh, create content, uh, improve Grammarly, of, and of course, a summary and ask the document. Then we have the, uh, this is use case specific part. Use case specific part is some, are some pipeline written in, with long chain that allow us to inject into the model our custom knowledge base. Uh, and this is not specific to our use case of uh, uh, integration into the LibreOffice. Because today, we are, you saw the demo with the document from the user. But tomorrow, let's say that our customer care has a knowledge base with um, um, guidelines about how they can answer to um, user uh, ticket. You can inject that knowledge base into the model and create a chatbot for customer support. So it's very, very specific. Any use case that needs your knowledge base instead of the model's knowledge base can be implemented with these pipelines. And of course, we have a LibreOffice specific part with the um, UI that you saw, implemented by Stefan previously. About the, the pipeline that you saw, I just want to detail a little bit, and why we do it. Large language model, all the large language models, are actually limited in type of, in size of the input. You have a context, limited context input size. 
for example, the model that we use uh, can receive maximum 4,000 um, words or token. Not quite similar, but let's say that are similar. So a user document is very big, can have hundreds of pages. How you send that document to the model? You don't send it. What you do is actually you index the document into a vector database, and when a user asks a question, you actually send the question to the vector database and extract from the entire document only the part relevant to your question. And you send to the model a prompt engineering that you saw previously, which is saying the context, and the context is this chunk extracted from the entire document and the question. So this is a mitigation of the first limitation, the model input size. Yeah, as you, I mentioned, Lama 230 billion that we use for this demo um, has 4K tokens input. MPT has 8K token. It's also a uh, mosaic train transformer, open source trans uh, large language model. And as you saw, mitigation depends on the use case. For, for question and answering, you saw the mitigation was a vector database. For summarization, it's a little bit tricky because the document can be very big and you need to do something like map reduce. And this is what you do. You chunk the entire document, you summarize each chunks, and you do, you do again this process until you actually get the final summary. And this is one of the techniques to mitigate. So this was limitation one of four. We have four limitations, not be boring. Hardware. Models uh, eat a lot of GPU memory. For example, a 7 billion model eat around 30 gigabytes. A 7 billion model uh, around 160 gigabytes. We also deploy Llama to 7 billion on 320 gigabytes. It's a lot. How you can mitigate this? Of course, you can buy better hardware or more hardware, but it's not always an answer, right? It costs money. There is a very interesting mitigation. Uh, Call optimization of the model for low memory. And there are some optimization techniques that I will not detail here that allow you to run big models on low infrastructure. Just for example, GGML and quantization. Quantization means to actually load your weight of the model instead of a floating number on 32 bits or an infloating number on 8 bits. And suddenly the model becomes much, much uh, smaller. Of course, depending on the, the, on the quantization method, you'll get some penalty on accuracy. No free meal. Okay, the three or four limitation, the speed and latency, and this is the really, really unbelievable. The VLLM. The VLLM is the technique to optimize a large language model that is actually providing eight time latency and 25 throughput. And these are the number from the internet benchmarks and we also test it internally. And it's actually like that. You can get eight times latency improvement of the models. And what you saw previously on the demo, it was using the VLLM version of the models. It's really, really fast. Of course, uh, it takes a lot of, uh, more memory to run this model because they are doing some optimization of the memory, uh, on the page attention, uh, and so on, on the uh, batch processing of the models. Just to see some comparison, the hugging face, plain old hugging face framework versus the VLLM in terms of throughput request per minute. And the last limitation is the hallucination and the wrong answer. Um, and this is the second reason why I really love this use case is that when you use the knowledge base of the models, the models has a lot of hallucinations or the high level of hallucination. Hallucination means that the model is giving you, uh, is inventing answers when it doesn't know. Um, then, um, what is happening is that you get a wrong, wrong answer, right? Um, and um, we have a mitigation for that. The first mitigation was that we didn't use the knowledge base of the model. We used our knowledge base. And the, the hallucination level dropped. However, you can still get hallucination. And there is an unbelievable simple method to eliminate hallucination. And it's very, very simple, very, very useful, is that when you get an answer from the model, you also return the source. It looks very, very simple, but imagine that you have a lot of, a big document um, with a lot of chapters, or you have a, a big PDF with user guide. You get an answer from the model, and you get the chapter or the URL to the source. And the user can fact check the answer. You can say, okay, it's a bullshit, it's a hallucination. Okay, okay, yeah, this chapter is actually helping me for my question, right? So. It's simple and it's a method to export the, 
the uh, detection of hallucination to the user, not to the model. And it's very, very uh, nice. <laughs> there are many other options to eliminate or to reduce the hallucination, better prompts, uh, better pipelines, uh, less creativity. If you reduce the creativity of the model, you can do more benchmarks and you get uh, less hallucination. And of course, you, have a, you need to have a consistent, data, consistent database of knowledge. If you have a user guide for your customer support and the information is spaghetti uh, with the facts that are uh, not uh, consistent, you'll get inconsistent answers. Uh, and the last uh, thing that you can mitigate for hallucination is to use something that is also used by GPT-4, from what we suspect, is mix of expert. It means that you can use different models from dif for different use cases. For example, we can use MPT for summary, because MPT has 8K uh, tokens length as input, and we can use LAMA too for question and answer because it's faster, it's slim, and it's, uh, it's intelligent, it's uh, smart. The technology, very quick, that we use, of course, open source model, Bloom, MPT, LAMA2, Falcon, Benchmark, Hugging Face, Docker, Langchain, and of course, Python, for the reason that you saw previously, and also because the Python is uh, together with R and uh, C are the languages used for large language models. Next step, optimization. We need to do some more optimization on the use cases that is, you saw, uh, to do some benchmarks. Benchmark that will be used to actually uh, buy the infrastructure or scale it up, the model. And uh, yeah, everything is nice in our head, but we need to get the feedback from our real users. So we need to expose some beta users to these features to see how they uh, consider that it's accuracy, the usefulness of this. And of course, this will not be possible without uh, the community. LibreOffice, Collabora, thank you. So, before we finish, do you have any questions?